Hey folks, JD here, and today we've got this. This is your very own Predator drone. Okay, let's open it up and let's have a little look and see what we've got inside. So here we are, here is everything. Right, let me just position myself properly here. So on the top we have got instruction manual. Then we've got all the parts. This is a kit, this is assemble yourself. So you are gonna have to, well, assemble yourself. Uh, so <laughs> we're gonna take all the bits out. Now this kit looks pretty easy. It's not like the jumbo jet we looked at, or the C-17 rather, that we looked at a few months ago. That was an absolute pain. This one looks like it is going to be quite easy. So we've got two accessory packs here. Let's look at these first. So we've got the charger, we've got propellers, spare propellers, extra screws and a little screwdriver. And then you've got your, um, your couple of little bits in here your there's two ways you can fly this you can hand launch it which is the way that i always do it or you can have a, a stand and start so you've got your standard um wheels here your for, for your undercarriage as well as you've got your little blanking plate here for underneath the quad as well underneath the, the drone as well uh so what we're going to do first of all is quite simply we're just going to open out everything we've got so these particular wings are joined in the middle here so when you open them up be quite careful and then you've got this so quite literally your motors here at the back are going to be at the back of the plane so literally it is going to look like that because that is how the predator flies so that should quite literally be everything that you need there on the back that fits in quite nicely by the look of it so what i'm going to do as well is so that we can ensure because i'm going to be using glue and i've got my little clamps here as well should i need them we are going to ensure that we got this around the right way the first time. So let's have a quick little look. So, right, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, so the instructions here, let's just go through this very, very quickly. The instructions here are based on every step-by-step -step bit that you have to you have to make in order. So first of all, it is apply the wings then hold them down, then stick them, and then feed the electronics and click all the electronics in. Uh, and then literally on the underside of it then, it's showing you all the different parts that you've got to connect, how to connect the wheels and everything else. So this should be quite quick to assemble, he says. So we've got the front part, we've got the back part. This looks like it's gonna be quite a sizable uh, aeroplane. Okay, what I'm gonna do for a second though, is I am going to alter there we are. I'm going to alter this camera angle. Sorry about the shiggling, folks. I just got to ensure that you can see everything that I'm doing. And I couldn't see then that I was doing some things and you couldn't see it. So here we go. So first of all, you've got the cables on the underside here by the motors. One here and one there. They have to be connected directly into the colour coordinated um, ports on the inside of the printed circuit board. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can, this isn't screwed in, this little bottom bit here. Now you can on, there we are, you can pop this out should you want to. Um, being very careful not to pull anything or snap anything. And then when you've got that set up, what you can do is you can poke the cables into the bottom of it. And then line them all up and then attach everything correctly. If you, pre if you prefer to do that, which is the way that I prefer to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put that in. Flip this around the other side and then connect them up. So white to white, red to red. So there is only one way they can go in. So then I'm going to do white to white and then I'm going to do red to red. Now, when you connect this up, if you are using standard uh, ESD safety precautions, ensure you're not wearing any um, fleece or anything which can blow the printed circuit board. Now, usually I have an ESD safe part of my office here, just quite simply because I work in IT and I do a lot of repairs on certain things. So therefore I like to have an ESD safe bench. This is not ESD safe. <laughs> We've got a fleece line here. So just be very careful when you do it. Right, so that's all in. That's all clipped in without there being any problems. Now what I'm going to do is just double check before I stick anything down and just want to ensure I've got everything. So that bit that I said was for the bottom of the fuselage, it's not, it's for the top. So I'm going to just do, because I'm making this on a Wednesday, I've got a day off work. And then I'm not going to be flying this until a Saturday, hopefully. So I'm going to leave this go off for a couple of days. So all I'm going to do 
This is why I use Yoohoo, because I think it's very good for EPP foam. So, what I'm going to do is just do a little amount on the inside here, ever so slow, ever such a small amount, just on the inside there, just to hold everything together. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, good. And then, that way then, everything holds down, a little bit on the top here, and a little bit on the bottom bit there as well. And then, you who takes quite a while to go off. So, what I normally do, is this is when I would employ my hobby clamps. But unfortunately it doesn't... Oh! Oh, no, I can't unfortunately get them in. Oh yes I can. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So I can get one side in there, and I can get the other side in here. The centre bit here, you should be able to see right the way down to the main part of the aeroplane. I can see right down the main part, and I can see my hand at the other end. So I know that I have attached that correctly. And I want to attach my hobby clamp there. So you want to attach, if you are using hobby clamps, be very careful, especially with EPP. But essentially that's what you're going for. Hold on the top, and then if I can just turn that round so you can see... They are held on the bottom here as well. Sorry, not a very good way to show you there. Right, so that's the part of the hobby clamps, but I do have to take them off for a second because I do have to put on this little plastic bit here. Now this little plastic bit fits on and goes along the main point of the... the it follows the main shape of the, of the wings. So what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of Yoohoo on the top here just going to hold this little crease together in the middle and then that is where now don't forget don't use too much Yoohoo Yoohoo is quite a thick glue and not just that as I found with some very early models I built a few years ago uh, it can actually alter the weight of a plane when it's when it's all put together now this part is going to take a lot of holding because this part you have got to add a lot of pressure so this is going to take a little while now what I can do hopefully is if they are oh no they're not they're too shallow damn it I should have used grabbed my bigger clips if I had my bigger clips I could have held these on with my clamps but unfortunately I can't because my small ones aren't big enough right so this is what the Predator drone looks like so far, the Predator plane looks like so far. So we've got the, the head, the nose of the plane there towards the front. We've added on the wing span, uh, the wings here, and then we've added on the plastic clip here just to hold everything in. Now, I'm hoping this glue is going to be strong enough. If it's not, I may have to resort to something, something else to hold on this part here. No. Okay. So I'm going to have to hold on to this then, by the look of it. If you push it down quite tight, then you should be pushing the plastic into the EPP foam. This bit is going to require me to put some pressure on and actually hold that down. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the back bit here so I can stick everything in at the same time and just leave it all to go off. So for the the tail, what we're going to do is there is a specific, a specific way it has to go in. And that way is the key shape here, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So if you can't see it, don't worry. Right now, I will show you in a couple of minutes. This key shape here, that I'm currently lathering in glue, it only goes in one way. See? Looks like, it looks like a standard keyhole. So that only goes in one way. So once you've lined up exactly which way that should go on, your little dowels push in. You've got to apply some pressure, obviously. But then once you've applied a medium enough enough pressure, there's nothing, not like the wings, to push by, but to push back on this. So once it's in, it's in, and that's it. This is the drone fully assembled. Okay, we've got a battery under here, which is a 3.7 volt, 450 milliamp hour. Very, very small form factor. Very, very small battery indeed. That should give you about 10 to 15 minutes of flight. Uh, the transmitter is looks like a standard quadcopter transmitter, to be honest. You've got, oh, no, you don't. It is locked. I thought you had full movement, but you don't. You've got your throttle, which is locked in one particular way, and you've got your your left and right which is in another way which is quite it's quite it's quite usual to have this with a plane configuration but still because there wasn't just a particular line in the middle or up the top i thought that was unlocked but it's not it's locked that's really cool okay you've got your standard trim buttons around the outside you've got your um your 
notification LED and your on and off button and lanyard holder should you want to should you want to hold it um, should you want to use it that's quite cool so what about what about what about what about batteries inside here well this clip is an absolute nightmare oh ow that really hurt uh four AA batteries my friends to go in there to power it this uh transmitter does not allow usb charging so you have got to ensure the batteries inside it are shop bought or fully charged before you go any further with it and that is quite literally what you then end up with my camera is too my area is too small here to show you so there we go that's it 44 centimeter wingspan predator drone very very nice now if you did unlike me if you did want to put on the um the the wheels for a stand and start then you have your clips at the front here that you can uh, attach them to and at the back here also just to fit them into there and that will give you your wheels now i don't bother using them because i fly over grass and this cannot do a stand and start over grass so what i'm going to do folks is i'm going to stand here for about the next 30 minutes and hold this um, so what uh we're going to do next now in the next couple of days we're going to be taking this guy out and hopefully we're going to be putting him through his paces now, i may have to wait for the weather to subside um so i don't know when exactly we're going to see this but hopefully it's going to be this saturday coming all right then folks well you take care of yourself and i shall see you all very very soon thank you ever so much for watching and listening i've been jd you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please like and subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers i hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends happy flying <laughs>